High effort, high fidelity memes, rare memes, layered memes, glorious, forbidden, esoteric memes. What you are seeing is a list of occult orders, secret societies, and cults all arranged in the political compass format. Each square individually tailored with its own unique handcrafted wojack and referential text. This meme can look intimidating, so let us begin by understanding what the axis means. The vertical represents if a group's interests are aligned with the demiurge or not. What's the demiurge, you say? Well, basically the footnotes version is this. In Gnostic cosmology, instead of just having a spiritual and material world where God and angels inhabit the spiritual and humans and animals inhabit the material, there's a sort of intermediate world. This plane belongs to the Demiurge and his servants, the Archons. As the story goes, the Demiurge is the creator or architect of the material world, forging it out of chaos. However, only by stealing light, power, souls, from above can he actually populate the material world. As such, the world we live in is either a prison or a training ground, and we can choose to either stay asleep, become a prison guard, or escape the Matrix. Basically, being pro-Demiurge means you want to maintain and perpetuate the Demiurge's material domain, whereas anti-Demiurge means you're a rebel, and you either want to perform a jailbreak with friends, or simply transcend the limitations of matter. The horizontal axis is a little harder. Left-hand path and right-hand path can be interpreted in two ways, either as the left hand kind of being evil and about ego deification, than the right hand being the good guys who self-sacrifice and aim for ego dissolution, or the other way where the right hand is kinda almost being orthodox, and the left hand being those crazy guys who live in the wild and do weird practices. The other flavors in the mix are the terms Dionysian and Apollonian. These concepts come from Nietzsche's birth of tragedy, and very roughly, Apollonian equals intellectual, Dionysian equals instinctual intuitional. Now, looking back at the meme, you can see the original creator has made some interesting choices, which may not hold up under a microscope, but I think if you squint your eyes, you can see the family resemblances he was going for. Nonetheless, let us begin. Ordo Templi Astarte, founded by Poke Runyon, ex-Green Beret captain and one of the big boys in the American occult scene. This guy has been around forever. Radio shows, DVDs, books, novels, ETC. He self-describes as a gentleman of the old school, which he defines as one who recites classical poetry to heartless beauties while wrestling alligators. Ring Ring, based department? He's recently been talked about again for his hermetic yoga system, which turns out to be very close and in some cases parallels recently rediscovered secret Rosicrucian techniques. Nonetheless, the OTA is technically an OTO offshoot, synthesized with a little hermetic order of the Golden Dawn magic and given a Phoenician mythology paint job, all this packaged around the central ritual of the Crater Rapoa. Overall, the OTA is based and probably one of the best places to learn Solomonic scrying magic. Hmm, not bad. Order of Nine Angles. That's right, angles, not angels. Which makes sense because we have our first group of edgelords here, known for domestic terrorism, promoting forced snuggle time, and randomly spamming online esoteric boards with thug shaken memes. The original group, if it ever existed, claims a true pagan lineage out of a native Welsh group. Hmm. That being said, 
At a glance, their doctrine just seems to be a generic mix of Luciferianism with various hermetic and alchemical elements added in. Now, for some reason, these guys have gotten massive attention, relatively, from scholars, media, and governments, hence the avoiding MI6 thing. It should be noted that one of the leaders in an offshoot sister order called the Temple of Blood was found out to be on the FBI's payroll. The only thing I found out about the infiltrating Balkan churches line is an article explaining that in Montenegro, a high-ranking member of a local ONA lodge made it to the rank of deacon in the Montenegrin Orthodox Church, which to my knowledge is unrecognized by the rest of the Orthodox world and seems to merely be an outgrowth of nationalist Montenegrin politics. If you want to know more about these guys, there is a video on the Infographics Show channel, but the problem with this video that is shared by a lot of anti-right-wing content is that it accidentally makes the ONA look cool. And here's the thing. Come closer. These guys are cringe as f They're losers who jerk off to porn and spam gore on forums. I sincerely believe they're just a government honeypot filled with feds. Avoid at all cost. Okay, here's one I didn't know off the bat. OTZ means Order of the Trapezoid. However, the rest of the meme references an artist called Boyd Rice. As such, while researching this, I was sent on a wild goose chase, high and low. Thank you to my friend Ghoul Shadows for finally helping me figure it out. Anyway, Boyd Rice is an American artist known for his music albums under the name Non. His songs include I Have a Dream and Total War. Why is Boyd here? Well, he at one point was the Grand Master of the Order of the Trapezoid. But what is Ots? It's the inner order within the original Church of Satan founded by Anton LaVey. It seems, despite the fact that LaVey's church was a hardline materialist cult of reason, Boyd was actually a bit of a mystic and had some real substance to him. This can be seen in the linear notes for his album, God and Beast, which reads as the following. In a Promethean sense, man is a god, but on an even more profound level, man is a beast. This primary contradiction has plagued mankind for a millennia. Man is a god. Man is a beast. These two aspects of his personality have been waging war with one another for countless centuries. A war whose casualties are seen everywhere and recognized nowhere. But there exists, however, a long-forgotten place in the soul where God and beast intersect. To go to that place is to witness the death of one world and the birth of another. Join me. Not gonna lie, kinda based. If you want to know more about Boyd, there's an interview from over 10 years ago on the Survive the Jive channel of all places. It was a good interview, where they don't just talk or discuss his music, but also his contributions to hermetics and academic scholarship. Really interesting guy, highly recommend. Okay, here we have an interesting one. The Left Hand Path of the Red Dragon. Dragon Rouge is an order based on the development of the individual, where you pay a small fee to show your seriousness and get a package with practices and occult philosophy to read and work through at your own pace. After a year on probation, then they let you into the real order by ceremonially initiating you into the first degree of their 11 degree system. How does this work? I do not know. Do you have to travel to the closest temple? Do they initiate you remotely? Or are you present to the ceremony via Zoom? No idea. I'm not a member, but these guys seem pretty solid. For one, the founder seems to have an actual degree in philosophy, so the entire system has a way sturdier backbone than just some other school where, I don't know, the leader is a random guy who took LSD and saw aliens and wants to start a new religion or something. 
Their website mentions the usual sources for ancient knowledge, Pythagoras and Plato, but also Spinoza gets a mention, as well as German idealism. Kinda really makes me curious as to what their full system of magic is like. Dragon Rouge's overall system is summed up via the seven points. 1. Antinomianism. The rejection of all religious legalism, so basically they reject the idea that spiritual development is tied in any way to the obedience of laws. Cool, I can, I can dig it. 2. Apotheosis, the attainment of godhood being the overall aim. Solid. 3. Draconian initiations to Ordo Draconis, which is the institution that supports that process. I can sense a little bit of edge there. 4. The left-hand path, the non-orthodox style of path that focuses on the individual liberty and freedom. Yeah, but I can dig it. Five, Hexcraft. Ooh, got a little more edge back in there. I think this is something to do with their magic system, I suppose. I don't know. Six, the eleven dimensions, both in the lore of the cliff-off and the fractal geometry of Benno Mendelbro. I assume this is their cosmology, which involves the exploration of the abyss. The inclusion of fractal geometry leads me to think they believe the universe to be like an infinite labyrinth which holds secrets to further development. Nonetheless, 7. The recognition of the objective reality of previously mentioned eleven dimensions, and the red dragon itself as the seven-headed intelligence residing in the dark and unknown parts of the universe, as well as in dimensions inaccessible for uninitiates. Take that, muggles. Not quite sure what that last part fully means, but the red dragon may allude to the western equivalent of the Kundalini serpent. If so, it may give a clue or an indicator to the core secret inner order teachings being may be alchemical in nature. Seems pretty solid for a left-hand school, not gonna lie. For a more comprehensive, better breakdown of their system, I suggest going over to Angela's Symposium. She has a fantastic video on her channel for you to check out. Shadow Wizard Money Gang, we love casting spells. Ah, the Tiffonian OTO. Another self-initiatic school, this time with UFOs and Lovecraft monsters. So, Kenneth Grant, the Wojak depicted, was an original disciple of Aleister Crowley. But, sometime after Aleister Crowley's death, Grant butted egos with the head of the OTO. And basically, instead of getting kicked out, he said, fine, I'll make my own OTO. But with aliens and Lovecraft monsters, I guess? Hence the meme text being a Necronomicon reference. Kenneth Grant was also influenced by Austin Osman Spare's work, hence his system seems to be about using trance states to descend into the river of pure life force and transform the human consciousness. There also seems to be a lot of talk about entering through a succession of gates and meeting Egyptian deities. It's, it's always Egyptian or Babylon with these guys. If you want to know more, really, it is best to just read Grant's works, specifically the Tiffonian trilogies. Meme-meticists. Here we have a reference to good old meme magic. The best way to tell this story in brief is, there was once a period of time where online the term kek replaced the term lol. Kek being the Korean equivalent of lol, it slowly made its way from the online gaming world into the world of online image boards, possibly because of the Gamergate event. Naturally, the word kek was paired with Pepe the Frog. Then, due to certain political events in 2016, and with a strange overlap in the online chaos magic world, it was found that there happened to be an obscure Egyptian god named Kek. And guess what? The Egyptians represented the god Kek with the animal of a frog. All of a sudden, everyone doing online chaos magic and frog posting collectively lost their minds. They had literally altered reality and created a new god, which then inserted itself retroactively into our history. Basically, this was the first hyperstition that a mass of people collectively experienced, and proof that Kekism, or meme magic, was real. 
Here dubbed mimeticists as an alteration of hermeticists, I have no idea what they're doing now, but I think maybe, just maybe, the real mimeticism was the friends we made along the way. Question. What happens when you mix tantric Buddhism with apocalyptic Christianity? You get domestic terrorism and your founder being executed by hanging. True story. Aum Shinrikyo began as a 15-person meditation group in the mid-80s, and by the mid-90s, the movement had 50,000 members, and its assets added up to over $100 million. It had facilities in several different nations, including the United States, Germany, and Russia. They also engaged in assassination attempts, taught their adherents to assemble unconventional weapons, and plotted to overthrow the Japanese government. Goals, am I right? There are plenty of articles and documentaries that dive deep into the Order's devious actions. However, what is the real spiritual essence that originally attracted its followers? Well, it doesn't really seem to be anything other than standard yoga practices, with the aim, you know, to awaken chakras or cultivate psychic faculties. Sprinkle a little Taoism here, a little Vajrayana there, add the teachings of Notre Dame, and you got yourself a fine Armageddon cult, I guess. The part in the meme about slowly infiltrating the entertainment companies I think comes from the early days where they were producing manga, anime, and radio shows to try to boost membership. I doubt they have any real influence nowadays. Since the death of their founder, their order has split into multiple splinter groups, none as big as the original. Local metaphysical shop owner. This seems to be another joke entry, the implication being that the most serious student of metaphysics obviously starts their own independent bookstore so that they can get their own books easier and spend all their day reading, uh, living the dream. I guess the irony would be if they want to be a successful business, they'll need to end up serving the masses and buy a plethora of new age channeled works and crystals to adorn their shelves. Right, Aeonic Futurists. Imagine if Futurism and Esoteric Fascism had a baby, and that baby decided the world is hopelessly lost, so we need to accelerate it to its downfall with nuclear war. How do we arise anew if we first don't burn to ashes? How do we become stars if we don't burn like they do? These guys don't want to stop the Great Reset. They aspire to be the hand pushing the button. A complete dissolution of all history and societal values. These guys just want a year zero calendar that can only be found on the other side of an apocalypse. I had to read their manifesto for this video, which, you know, starts off with the usual extremist stuff about youth, vitality, violence, racism, ETC, you know, you know, all the usual notes, same old song. I was waiting for the esoteric part. Eventually they start talking about religion. So, all religion bad because of corruption. Yep, yeah, sure, okay. Then they talk about making one's own religion out of eternal truths. Okay, let's hear them out. So you take bits and pieces you like from various traditions and make your own system guided by your own intuition. Hmm, okay. But you're not supposed to do it like an archaeologist would. You're not resurrecting the dead in a form of archaeological necromancy. You are looking at dead traditions, but you're extracting what is living out of them, and I guess stitching them together and making your own Frankenstein tradition. How very Promethean. And how do you do this, of course? How do you know what to take and what to leave? Your own subjective connection to divinity, of course. The idea is, I think, the things that you take are supposed to be in and of themselves eternal principles, implying that there is something eternal and unchanging. This makes them kind of perennialists, which is to me contradictory, because if there are eternal principles, you just need to align yourself to them. You don't need to blow up the universe or anything. I think guys like these really need to read Process Philosophy or Henry Bergson or something, because I don't think there is anything coherent in their thinking that actually reconciles eternal 
original tradition and progress. They all seem to want either Lord of the Rings or Warhammer 40k, but fail because they're trying to reach for both of them at the same time. Anyway, besides that a few Hitler quotes, followed by uh, some misquotes of Nietzsche, and then an exclamation about how they want to become gods themselves, but with no magical or idealist philosophy backing them. It was, um, it was kind of cringe, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. And that's it for now. If you want to support the channel so I can upload more regularly, please consider giving a one-time donation via PayPal, or checking out the Ko-fi page. They're better than Patreon. But seriously, any amount whatsoever you can give goes a long way. I don't have much time to make these vids nowadays, so any support helps. Thank you so much.